Mushoku Tensei was not airing this past Sunday. Therefore, we watched an extra episode of Tower of God that I shouldn't have given you. But that also means we have an extra episode of Any News Tower of God content, episode 2. Let's see it. Unlike episode 1, episode 2 of Tower of God barely skipped out on anything. Nice. The only things that were cut were some of the finer details and information on most of them. Also, sorry guys, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but um, the subtitles uh, is unavailable. For whatever reason, he did not allow subtitles in this video. The side characters. So... Doesn't matter though, because you can fucking enable the subtitles on my video, which will then transcode the subtitles for the any news content and meme. When you won't see the subtitles, you know what I mean, right? Just as we did last week, let's continue our Tower of God cut content series and take a look at what exactly we missed out on. Episode but first, two. Well, no ad, no ad, no, that was the, oh, the, okay. You know, in anime episodes, sometimes there's no opening and no opening means like it's going to be a hype episode. I'm not sure if the same translates for any news. Maybe he just didn't get a sponsor this one, but this is exactly where he should have said. But first, before we get started. Yeah, out of 400 covering chapter 6 to chapter 11 of the webtoon. The episode begins with a short flashback, but there was more to it than Bomb simply learning the meaning of the word conflict. What do you say? Whoa, 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 whoa. I think he just changed the pronunciation of Bomb right there. Listen, listen, listen. Begins with a short flashback, but there was more to it than Bomb simply learning the- <laughs> I bet you so many motherfuckers, so many motherfuckers on episode one video when it is like <laughs> actually any news it's not bam it's bum you are basically saying sasuke sasuke instead of sasuke please learn how to pronounce korean words better mr any news <laughs> i don't think it's a big of a deal i really don't think it's a big deal in fact i think saying bam is kind of funny it, it, it's also kind of easier to say than bum bum you have to kind of like I don't know, there's like an extra thing that you have to do to make that ah kind of noise, but bam, it's just so easy to say. I don't think it's a big deal at all. The meaning of the word conflict. It was One second. My AC on. Here we go, let's go. It was more a means to showcase why exactly Rachel is so important to him. We learn that everything that constitutes who Bam is derives from what Rachel taught him. Basically, how to read, write, be a fucking human, wipe his ass. Like, again, I just think it's like a motherly figure. Like, bro is a hatchling. First thing he sees, he latches onto. From the words he heard, to the writing he read, and even down to the emotions he was able to experience, they all came from her. That's why Bam- Like, if the tower worships King Zahad, then Bam doesn't worship King Zahad. Bam worships Rachel. That's the kind of deal, right? Feels that every single one of his words and actions should be dedicated to her. Rachel was much more than just someone Bam was fond of. Fond is even kind of an understatement. You could say what Bam was feeling was something more similar to devotion. Devotion. Back to the second floor, Bam had just encountered Kun. You see, before Rack had Evan showed up to floor. challenge the Black March, Kun first stopped Bam from attacking the passive giant that he was focused on. Yeah, the, the passive giant. These dudes are super nice. They're a race of people that don't act, you know, hostile. They always act chill no matter what circumstances. I, I was quick to cast judgment on this dude. He was attacking nice. the passive giant that he was focused on. The fact that Bam was even pointing his sword towards it was quite intriguing to Kun. And this is because creatures from that tribe could be found almost anywhere in the tower. He's super and chill. It was a well known fact that they were very mild mannered. But we don't even, we're not even from the tower, right? We're from outside the tower. If you consider this tower a different world, then Tower of God is an isekai, my friends. I'm sorry to tell you, but you thought that you were watching some kind of new gen, you know, peak fantasy show? This is an isekai, and this is not my words. Don't, no, 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 no. Go to episode two or one. I think it's episode two when he's talking to Leroro about where am I from, the outer world. Bama literally said an other world, or I'm from the outside world. Isekai. They rarely ever showed any type of hostility. This was the first indication to Kun that Bam was different. If he was from the tower, then he should have known what that being standing next to him was. So this led Kun to ask Bam where he came from. Oh, it was a tough seductive. Because Bam Pleasure. couldn't quite tell the truth since he remembered that irregulars were normally feared by others. He had no idea how Kun would react if he found out he was one of them. But that didn't mean Bam had to lie either. 
Instead, he just didn't answer the question. It was a response that appealed more to Kun since he knew that Bam could have just as easily lied. It displayed that he was a truthful person. The second indication- Kun is actually way too smart. This, this dude, I barely know him, but anytime I look at him, it just exudes confidence. You know what I mean? And it's not even like- I, it's not even just like a dumb person being cocky, like Yamauchi from Klaus and the Elite. I look at this dude, and it just feels like someone that is just so fucking legit and competent. We haven't seen him really do anything just yet. He always just pulls out a knife, a dagger out of his bag, and chocolate bars. But other than that, he kind of just like backseats everybody and talks mad shit. But at the same time, yeah, charisma, exactly. Super confident guy. Bomb's irregularity came when Rack challenged him. As Kun was about to leave, it was Even like the way he perceived the first test, everyone else immediately followed the rules to call down to 200 or 400. But Kun was like, y'all are fucking slaves. Y'all don't know any better. Y'all are slaves to this rule. Wake up. Open your third eye. It's like, what the fuck are you on about? It's like the Black March that triggered his curiosity. It was the fact that someone as weak as Bam was deemed a worthy opponent to someone as strong as Rek. It just- Really? So Bam- Oh. I thought Kun- I thought Rack come in here, obviously Rack saw the sword and was like, holy shit, that's important, I'm gonna show up there, but Kun's interest was Rack's reaction to Bam, and not really the sword that Bam had. But technically, the only reason Rack went there and acknowledged Bam is because of the sword. So indirectly, doesn't this contradict what Annie just said anyways? Didn't make any sense. Only after they escaped from Rack did Kun realize that Bam was carrying the Black March. And that was the final indication that Bam was special. It Got it! So that was not part of the calculation until after, so it's not contradicting. It became clear that Bam was someone Kun needed to keep close. So he decided right there that he would climb the tower with him. Now, this kind of sentiment took Bam by surprise though. It was rather odd for someone he just met to be so willing to help. That's another thing, right? We are putting too much faith in Mr. Kuhn. I hope he doesn't backstab us. He seems too fucking smart. And Bam is just a, you know, naive young kid that doesn't know any better. Can we feel safe around Mr. Cool Guy? I mean, I hope so, but... Mm. I mean, he was just so weak, so it didn't really make any sense to him. But even after insisting that he was no good, Kun simply responded by saying that it'd be fun to hang out together. Okay. Which also didn't make much sense either, considering how quiet Baum was. I'm sure that <laughs> could have been part of Kun's reasoning. But really, it was mostly because of the significance of having the Black March. Yeah. Even Rack had a vague comprehension of the significance of this weapon. But he too couldn't fully understand what it truly meant. Also, wait, wait, can we get an Anius like special where he talks about the significance of turtles? Why the fuck does Rack go around calling humans turtles? Is he racist? <laughs> why, why are we turtles? What is the association between alligators and turtles? Do alligators eat turtles? I don't know. If an alligator does eat turtles, then I guess it makes sense that Rack is like role playing because he's an alligator who's a hunter and his prey are turtles. So he calls people turtles because he's going to be the predator and they're the prey. That kind of makes sense, right? Only Kun seemed to realize the full extent of the situation Bam found himself in. Anyway, as the first test ended, the second immediately began. And this one was arguably more difficult than the last. Yeah, because the second- oh, not this test, sorry. Wait, are we going to talk about the Shinsu test? Because the Shinsu test is so fucking cruel. I don't, I don't think we're really talking about the Shinsu test just yet. But the Shinsu test is like, just be lucky. If you think about it, the short time limit they gave to find a team of three meant that you'd have to team up with the people closest to you. Actually, this is also luck. I, I take my, my words back. This is also luck. Shibisu got super fucking lucky. It's just like, you got five minutes, find two other people. Shibisu was just in the right position at the right time to just like leech off of these two. These two didn't even acknowledge Shibisu, but Shibisu was like, <laughs> I got it, boys. Yo, 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 us three, we're going to take over this fucking tower. You hear me? And those two are like, who the fuck are you? And the people closest to you were more than likely the ones that Bald. you were just fighting with. So you basically had to turn your enemies into allies. But as we saw, Rack didn't really care what the test was. He just wanted to hunt some strong opponents. Turtles. So when Kun saw that Rack wasn't going to listen, the only plausible strategy- What is that knife, dude? Yo. 
Yo. Fuck a 13 princess series. Fuck fuck the 13 month series. What 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 is this knife? <laughs> is this like a if it's uh, wait, what 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 is the thing? If there's like 13 months, what is this? The fucking how many weeks are there in a year? <laughs> fucking like 58 or some shit. Is this is this the 58 week series fucking knife? <laughs> what, what what is this shit dude? Why does he always pull out this dagger? We don't know it. Is it 52 weeks? My bad. <laughs> it's the 52 week series daggers, bro. I don't know. What 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 is this shit? A plausible strategy was to capture him. Even more than the knife, I think the bag is more OP. There's gotta be something super OP about that bag and how it can pull off an infinite amount of Snickers, man. There that that dag that that bag, bro. It's gotta be its own fucking special series of bags. That way, when the test ended, both himself and Bam could meet the conditions and pass. The thing is, Rack was a lot more volatile, and there was at least 30 seconds left before the test was going to end. So Kun had to not only dodge Rack's attacks while closing the gap, but he also had to protect Bam too. What the anime didn't show was that Rack's spear was actually about to hit Bam. Oh? Bam hadn't even realized the plan that Kun came up with yet. He was literally standing still when Rack threw the spear. He just stood his ground. The only reason it missed is because Kun was able to deflect it at the last second by throwing that his knife. That knife again. That Otherwise, knife again. Bam's journey would have ended right there. So with the three of them- Rack almost killed Bam right there. Holy shit. <laughs> Rack could have just ended the Tower of God right there. Nah, something else would have happened them now a team, they were taken to the next test point of Evan Kell's mothership. It's here that we get a- Who is Evan Kell? Maybe it's the blonde dude or the girl that's sitting in the room of red panels that we saw at the end of episode 2. Because if Evan Kell, I mean, if this whole place, this testing area is, you know, named after Evan Kell, right? The first floor was head-on, second floor is Evan Kell, then it must be that blonde dude. He seems like the most important. If he's not the admin, I still am going to commit to the idea that Evan Kill is the admin of this floor. Small bit of dialogue from some of the other teams. First was Shibisu Hats and <laughs> Anak. Anak. Hats. Bro's name was Hats? Okay. Unlike in the anime, Shibisu wasn't really trying to gloat about himself. It was more like he was just trying to make casual conversation. But yeah. Hats found Shibisu to be annoying and Anak just thought he was useless. <laughs> I mean... The book, the, co the cover of the book does seem like that, right? Shibisu does seem a little obnoxious. He does seem annoying. And on top of that, he doesn't even really seem special at all. It, it, like, he just seems like the most average person here. And that's why I'm so fascinated by this character. The kind of characters, the archetype of characters that I really enjoy in anime or like manga, basically just like fantasy shows or like, like just like stuff like this, is the Usopp characters from One Piece. The Buggy D Clown. Not Buggy the Clown, Buggy D Dot Clown. Or King from One Punch Man. People who seemingly are just so weak and useless, but somehow, through sheer luck, charisma, or a combination of those things, they just come out on top and they get the credit. So I just always love those kind of characters. And Shibisu, right immediately from the get go, seemed like that. Now, I hope Shibisu is capable in different areas. Because, like, for example, we're watching, like, fucking Kaiju 8 right now. Random example I'm bringing up, but there's, like, an important um, scene where the main character realizes that he's fucking useless if he's not in the monster form. So that's a little spoilers. But then he has different waves of supporting by being, like, a knowledge guy and helping, you know, side supporting things. So I'm sure Shibisu as well. He must have some ability that he can, you know, bring to the team and be the maybe the glue that holds these two together. Reagan Arataka, exactly. Another great example of a character who just seems to be a fraud, but just gets away with it. I love those characters, man. So, not wanting to be seen as weak, he decides to tell them about his deadly martial arts skills. Maybe it's a real. A secret form of combat that was passed down. A <laughs> little, little bit of spoilers, a little bit of spoilers. Of course, the other two just thought that he was lying. We then switch to an odd duo that was briefly shown in the background. Vegeta, is that you? Yo, Vegeta gained some fucking weight. Um, there's also a child over here. In the anime, based on their conversation, the girl was possibly some form of nobility, while the guy looked as if he was her knight. Nobility. His name was Hong Chun Wa, and it seemed as if actual Korean name. <laughs> Everyone else here, their names are. That's what I noticed. Like Shibisu is Japanese. Shibisu is not a Korean name at all. Anak, Pam, Kun, 
Agiro Agni, totally. And the Hong Chin Wai is straight up a Korean name. Did yeah, Rahel, Rachel. To this girl. Next, we shift our focus towards the devil looking guy. Yeah, this guy was super interesting too, because he had wings last episode. He was shown in the anime to be sitting on a rock surrounded by a few dead bodies. Supposedly, he was one of the more aggressive regulars, as okay. he was seen to ruthlessly attack and kill every person that he came across. He can fly, yeah? It was actually quite surprising that he was even able to find teammates to pass the second test with. The fuck? The little squirrel? Yeah, I did notice the little squirrel too, and they're hiding beneath like a little, like a pan. Finally, the last team they showed was of Ho, Serena, and Lore. Her name is Ho? <laughs> okay, this girl, Shibisu's girlfriend, is Serena. And Lore is the sleeping dude. Kun Agero Agnes was named after a soccer player? I believe you. A lot of Koreans are super soccer weebs. Soccer weebs as in people that fucking love soccer. So I believe you. But anyways, Ho, Serena, Lore. Serena was a bit concerned that one of her teammates was constantly sleeping. But Ho seemed to have a general idea of how strong Lore was. He really was strong, right? He was confident that there was nothing to be concerned about. Now, as Lore, bro, I love him too, cause he just like everyone else is out here fighting for their fucking lives, and bro is just sleeping, passing every test while sleeping. The Shinsu test, everyone got blown away, struggled to get him. Bro got up just a bit, passed it, and immediately fell asleep in front of the fucking Shinsu wall. That's so disrespectful, but I love it. Awesome as everyone looked, Mam needed to understand that everyone there was a potential. Yeah, see, how many people are wearing masks or disguises that could be Rachel? Like, what is this blob thing right here, man? Holy shit, it's Gara. Yo, it's Gara of the sand. You see this on the right? It's Gara. He's got the hair and he's got the sand thing in the back, dude. Enemy. Every single one of these people. There's a chrome ass guy. This dude has a fucking target on his stomach. And that's one of the difficult things for authors in these kind of shows where you have to draw so many characters, but how many characters are actually going to be important? Do I draw random ass designs or do I draw random ass like actually important designs? I'm sure there's like a delicate balance in doing that because in an anime, I'm sure like <laughs> if Tower of God was animated this year, right? And it, it, I, it will be, I'm saying like season one doing scenes like this, they would all be just like cut and paste CGI characters, man. People were regulars who came from the residential area of the tower. Which meant that they possessed at least one extraordinary talent. So one next. Mam couldn't let his guard down like he did with Kun. So there's the outer, middle, inner layer. The outer is the residential. Bam is not from the residential. He's from like the outer, outer. He's not even from the tower. Isekai. But all the regulars always has one exceptional power, really. After the argument between two of the regulars, Leroro enters to set the stage for the next test. It's going to get a bit more context on what a ranker is. A person who apparently reached the top of the tower, which sounds fucking insane because it seems like everyone is after the pursuit of reaching the top of the tower to be like become this godlike figure who gets like a wish granted. Because they are someone who has reached the top of the tower, they also receive a new ranking every season. The a s new ranking every season. What is this? Like every three months, a new fucking path of exile season, new fucking, you know, some kind of season where you climb the tower as fast as you can and there's like a record and that, that's how you get determined the amount of ranks you are, even though everyone is a ranker. Huh? I, un, I overestimated the difficulty of climbing the tower. I thought that like nobody has ever climbed a tower to the top before and we're waiting for like the prophesized child to fucking do it. But it sounds like this is like a... Just like a hobby for people. It's like there's a shitload of people that's climbed to the top and they're like, yeah, all right, another season, let's fucking go. Us the name Ranker. It's said that only one or two out of a couple thousand regulars will ever earn this title. Even still, one or two out of 1,000 is an insane ratio. But if there's like a hundred thousand people, a million, you know, people, then, you know, obviously it scales up. So one or two doesn't seem that bad. Anyway, that's a lot. We then get to see the first clear instance of Shinsu manipulation and just Shinsu in general. Leroro used his abilities to compress the Shinsu around him and make a physical barrier. You see, the more concentrated the Shinsu is, the stronger it becomes. And there are those who don't fare too well when they encounter it. why state. are you doing this? Annie why are you fucking doing this? this? test was to Annie determine whether someone okay, was good. actually physically capable of handling the diverse environments of the tower. So Shinsu is like, yeah, every time a shit like that has to happen, I have to fucking go like this and just look at chat until you guys say it's done. But like, Shinsu is literally just like the chakra of this show. The Reiatsu. The key. Chi. 
fucking uh, you know what i mean it's, it's it's like the energy system of this show but what's interesting is that shinsu it seems like it's like fluid like it's like water manifestation of water right but you can also kind of like breathe in the water i don't know how that works if not then there would nen nen is uh, I, I think that's like hunter x hunter there's like this meme pictures I see with that clown dude with like the Nen ability and fucking around and saying the most redundant shit. But yeah, that that's like another shonen show at the Mana system there, right? There was no point of climbing in the first place. The barrier wasn't even that highly concentrated. Kun knew that he could easily pass through it, and Rack had been hunting in the Shinsu all his life. So this wouldn't be a problem for him either. Okay. The only concern lay with Bum, but he just wasn't- No concern. A monster has appeared. The Shinsu was supposed to have some kind of resistance to push people away, but it phased through him. What does that mean? That means that Bam is... You could probably apply some kind of pseudoscience to this, right? On why the Shinsu was able to push people away, but Bam was able to stay here. Meaning that Bam is not like the others. His construction, his makeup... Is Shinsu? If you have a lot of Shinsu, would you just be able to phase through it? Is that the idea? ...pushed back at all. This gave Lerodo quite the shock. He seemed much more concerned- <laughs> Shock my ass. Bro's eyes are fucking going the other fucking direction right now. What is this art? The monster has appeared with this fucking panel, bro. <laughs> the monster has appeared. <laughs> amazing art, amazing art. ...turned than how he did in the anime. It was as if Bam not being knocked back by the Shinsu left him speechless. Was for a insane! Bit. So while the others worked their way through the barrier, Bam and Lerodo played their game. Initially, Lerodo chose Arak, calling her by name as if he already knew who she was. Why would he know? Because she has one of the 13 series. One of the 13 Zahad Princess. I'm sure everyone knows about the Zahad Princess. Therefore, Lerodo knew the name. Then we know that Bam chose her as well because he sensed a strong sort of aura around and She was her, glowing, yeah. Leading them to the tie which allowed Bam to ask his questions. When Irregulars. he inquired about Rachel, we learned that Lerodo hadn't seen her in any of the tests that he was in charge of. What? Why? She skipped through these tests? Is she so important that she just skipped through all the tests? Or she is in a disguise? We still, it's, it's, it's either of those two, right? She's in a disguise that would trick Lerodo, which I find it hard to believe because it's a fucking ranker, but disguise or skip the tests. It was possible that she could have taken a test somewhere else, but the Different only tests? way to confirm that was to check with Ivankel? Is, is this dude Ivankel? Kind of spoilers here, but I'm not too upset about this spoiler because it seems like a meeting. The other administrators. This meant that there were other tests. Ha this or we already got spoiled on this in episode one. We, we already got previous ending this video, you already fucking spoiled this, so it's not a big deal, I guess. ...happening in tandem with this one. The next question about irregulars gave us more context on the tower itself. We learned that within the tower, there are three separate divisions. The inner, outer middle, tower, outer. Inner tower, and middle area. The outer tower serves as the residential area. It's this looks here like that most people are born, and they could very well live there for their entire lives. The only way to get to the floors above or below are by using the middle area or inner tower. Okay. The inner tower is typically restricted to be used as testing grounds for the regulars. If someone was from the residential or middle areas, then they would have to use the inner tower to gain access to the floor above. The middle areas were more so used by rankers to skip to the floor of their choice. Oh, it's like quick travel. That's what this is. They've already climbed that shit. They don't need to go through all the different struggles to do it. So you can just kind of like instantaneously travel. It's the place that we see Yuri and Evan use to get to okay. where Bam is. Of course, all this information should have been common knowledge. I mean, every person taking the test was a regular who was born and raised within the tower. But we are an Isekai character, guys. Tower of God is Isekai, whether you like it or not. And it's a fucking isekai. And the common element between them was that they were chosen by Head-On for displaying some sort of talent. You see, Head-On hand picks and sorts all the regulars. Only with his permission can they climb the tower. But we're an and irregular. it's a fact that every person he selects will eventually make their way through the floor of test. However, those who weren't picked and sorted are classified as the irregulars. The ones that Lidado was referring to in the anime were Phantom Minium, Enryu, and Udek.
That's in the other one. Okay, so last episode, and he's told us Urek, Phantominium. But now there's three other ones, right? We have Urek, Phantominium, and what's his name? When the anime were Phantominium and Ryu and Urek. Enryu. Fire Dragon? Oh, bro. Bro's name is after a fire dragon? Okay. These names are kind of crazy, right? I don't even know what Urek is, but Urek just, just sound cracked to me. So we have, we have Phantominium. We have fucking Enryu after the fire dragon. We have fucking Urek. And then we have a calendar date, 25th of night. Urek. All people who were so powerful that just the stories of their feats of strength was enough to build this basis of fear around them. Bam wanted to know if there what was a way do? that he could meet them. The answer to that question was surprisingly yes. But in order to do so, he first had to climb the tower. It was just as head-on set in the floor below. Everything that Bomb could ever want existed up above. I want to meet the Irregulars, bro. Bro, if they, oh, could you imagine if the Irregulars had like a fucking, like a squad, like a guild of like just Irregulars. It's like, yo, this is the Irregular fucking squad. Bomb, you're invited. Let me coach you. Bro, could you fucking imagine? Because like the Irregulars, they must like band together. If they are beings that are feared upon, and every time they enter, chaos happens. Or maybe it's kind of like the Yonko system in like One Piece, where they're not really friends. They are very feared upon. They don't really band together. They're kind of like compete to rivalry. But I would love to meet an irregular. But in season one, I don't think that's gonna happen. This just sounds like like if this is the One Piece of webtoons, like how like like. It's gonna take a long, long, long fucking time, right? We're still in doing tutorial shit in tutorial land. Now, before the conversation could continue... I am not an irregular. I would be like a Shibisu. Hopefully, I would be like a Shibisu character. I'm not sure who, what other character here I would be able to relay with. I would like to think that I'd be like a Laurel, just like sleep always and pass through shit, but I'm not that cool. Shibisu, though... I mean, I'm kind of good at bluffing. I'm, kinda, I'm just good at kind of yapping and trying to sway people. So maybe something like that. That's why of all the Isekai characters too, I don't think I really relate to anyone except Kazuma. Because like everyone else is so fucking OP and broken. I like little... I like skills about like speech or like luck or shit like that. You know, like the Usopp's, you know, the, the buggy, the clown. Yeah, the kings, you know, the... The fucking, what's its name from? Mob Psycho. Uh, fucking, oh shit, how am I forgetting? Master, Shisho. Fuck! You know what I'm talking about. One of the regulars had their little outburst. It wasn't the sniper Reagan, like they you're had right. shown in the anime, though. You're right. Instead, it was someone different. A regular who believed he was the strongest out of all of them. Cap. So, to put into perspective why the test was important, Lidero gave a lesson on the full potential of Shinsu. Not only did he mention that it could provide immortality and godlike powers, but he also brought up a rumor. The irregular and the notorious had been. Rumor of the Enryu the Notor. I didn't hear about this in episode two. This is actual cut content. So, because like Letterdo here just like busted open 31st levels of Shinsu upon that sniper guy, but Enryu. The irregular Enryu the Notorious had been able to use Shinsu to create life itself. What it truly was a substance of you create life itself using Shinsu. Shinsu, I mean, can cause like immortality and godlike powers. So he like gave birth to a child with Shinsu. Is that 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 you can do that? Infinite possibilities. But the thing about Shinsu was that even though it could open up the door to literally anything, it could also shut you out. It what? wasn't meant to be used by everyone, uh, 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 which is why it was such a useful tool. No, no, more spoilers, no spoilers, more spoilers, things. more spoilers. Sure, this regular may Can have I watch? his entire Maybe? life and okay, given good. up everything, but no one was going to simply acknowledge his efforts and reward him for that. The world wasn't that kind. Every living being had its limits, and whatever that limit may be, the tower will eventually help you to realize it. This was actually such a chilling moment in the anime, because like, Lerudo wasn't even like being disrespectful or even being like that hostile towards this cocky motherfucker with the sniper that said I'm the best out of here why are you fucking blocking me out he just like gave him a reality check it's like you were simply not chosen and that is like some chills that is like holy fuck no matter what you do in life because of the way you spawned you're just locked out 
That's what he means by being locked out, right? You either are born with the potential of Shinsu or you're not. And if you're not, that's it. GG. Get fucked. You can't even fucking reroll. Something about that is just so cruel, but at the same time, so compelling. Because it makes you think like, what if? Like, what if I could be that person? That luck component of it. That kind. Every living being had its limits. And whatever that limit may be, the tower will eventually help you to realize it. Or in this case, it was the test administrator. Now, Shibisu didn't want to be one of those people whose limits were already determined. So, as he made a fool of himself trying to inch his way through the Shinsu, <laughs> let's go, Shibisu! He a bit of motivation to do this. Thing. Serena, Shibisu's girlfriend, let's go! She didn't want to give up either. It was old a hag. Was pretty much used to characterize these two as the weakest of the regular. <laughs> They're the weakest of the regular? No! <laughs> just say it again, say it again. What did you say? Either. It was a scene that was pretty much used to characterize these two as the weakest of the regulars. Oh! Oh! Fuck. Oh, fuck. We're the weakest of the regulars? Well, I never expected power from Shibisu. I don't expect anything of, like, combat from Shibisu. If he can, that would be cool. I hope Shibisu can deliver other words. I don't know. Maybe he's good at talking. Maybe he's good at lying. Maybe he's super smart. There's got to be something else he can do. And Serena, I don't really know about you, but you're, you're funny to ship with Shibisu. Well, the weakest out of the ones that serve as supporting characters anyway. Just okay. like Bum, they're pretty much coming in as underdogs as well. Can I watch? 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 Can I it got stuck, meaning there's resistance. Resistance, meaning the other people also got pushed back. This material also had some property that made it be able to get pushed back or even get stuck. What does it mean? What's in the bag? It must be the amount of Snickers, man. It, it must be the amount of fucking Snickers in there. Very interesting piece of foreshadowing for events that come to light during the crown game. Mm. Something that should be <laughs> obvious <laughs> <once> you've watched <laughs> episode <laughs> Anyway, with that, the pretest was completed. Bringing us now to Hang Sung's examination and to the end of episode 2. Now, there as is. I continue this series weekly, you should know that my first video got taken down by a copyright strike. Oh, what? Copyright strike? That's... It, it, it's not... like and We're doing fucking anime reactions, and I still think it's operated under fair use, but an anime review style getting a copyright strike? So, while I try to work through that issue and get the video back up, I'm gonna have to minimize the amount of webtoon panels I use in my video. It got striked not from the anime, but from the webtoon content. That is very interesting. And this is totally off topic, but I remember a lot of other people that read solo leveling back in the day with the webtoon also got fucked. I've heard of other people doing manga reaction for like Black Clover and other Shonen Jump stuff also got fucked from copyright strikes. So it's very interesting to hear like how copyright strike kind of like extends beyond just anime content ID, but webtoon panels, manga panels, huh? So if the video yeah that's why I, I would never do webtoon reactions bro it's just like and here, here's the thing right Here, here's the fucking thing i will never be able to do manga or webtoon reactions or light novel reactions because what if that gets animated one day then the blind reaction is ruined so i prevent myself from doing that now we could technically go back and read the solo leveling content that's already been animated we could but the limited time I have, I have to focus on content for YouTube and Patreon, where if I just focus on unedited content stuff, then it's not really maximizing my productivity. And I'm kind of scared on how I would even handle the, you know, the copyright strike. Like, would I, how would I fucking do it? Would I put a visual overlay on the visual, like the panels and then skip? Would I make Sir Gregor edit the fucking reading of the webtoon? I just think it's not a good idea to even do that. Plus, that kind of stuff would bring in a separate audience for like manga or webtoon or light novel fans rather than anime reaction fans, which then fragments an audience, which is bad for YouTube. So if I were ever were to do stuff like this, it would probably be on a separate channel, but I just don't think that it's a good idea. The video seems a bit lackluster on the editing side. Just know that it's only temporary until I can confirm that my channel will be safe to upload this type of content again. And if this video does get taken down by a strike, then unfortunately, I'm going to have to pause this series until everything gets. But we know in retrospect that that didn't happen. Guys, please go to Mr. Anonymous's channel.
Go like this video, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. It gives us such good breakdowns of The Sims, the things that we watch. I just wish that there was less, you know, anime, future anime episode scenes here, but it is what it is. Now, again, you guys got lucky. Yeah, I'm not supposed to be giving you two back-to-back, -to -back, you know, any news content or Tower of God episodes. Remember, but each week we will be doing like one a day or one a week until we get to the last week of this current, you know, spring 2024. Then we go hard and then catch up just in time for season two, okay?